Okay, problem 14 says, what is the center and radius of the graph of the circle? Right here, 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 4x minus 8y minus 10 equals 20. You could do this by completing the square, but a much easier way is to go to the conic sheet. And so I'm on the conic sheet, and you put in your coefficients, which are, remember they have to be in this format right here, so it would be 2 for the A, minus 4 for the B, the C is minus 10, then the D is 2, the E is minus 8, I have no other constant on the left-hand side, so I let the F be 0, and on the right-hand side, I had a 20. And when you do that, it will automatically graph the circle for you and tell you what the radius is. It's 4.47, so the diameter, if it asks, is twice that, and the center is calculated right over here to be uh, at the point 1, 2. On problem 15, it gives you two functions, f of x equals 2x minus 3 and g of x equals negative 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. First of all, it wants to know what is f of g of x. Well, f of g of x means to do this, put the g of x function into the f of x function where the x is. So it will be 2 times this stuff, the minus 3x squared minus 2x plus 1, then finish it off minus 3. And if you simplify that, taking the minus 2 through and subtract 3, you'll get minus 6x squared minus 4x minus 1. g of f of x means put the f of x function everywhere there's an x on the g function. So it'll be minus 3 times that quantity 2x minus 3. That gets squared. Minus 2 times x, which we're substituting in 2x minus 3, and then finish it off plus 1. Simplify this, and probably the best place to simplify this is the poly sheet. So I put in my coefficients, this is the bottom of the poly sheet, and I would get negative 12x squared plus 32x minus 20, and that's what uh, we have right there. Okay, f of f of f of x, or some people may say f raised to the third of x. Well, first what you need to do is get f of f of x. Well, f of f of x means substitute the function back into itself, so it would be 2 times the quantity, 2x minus 3 minus 3. If you simplify this, you get 4x minus 9. Now we can go ahead and substitute this into the function again. It will be 2 times that 4x minus 9 minus 3. And if you simplify this, you'll get 8x minus 21. On D, it says, uh, what is F inverse of X? Well, F of X was 2X minus 3. So use your Y notation to begin with. Okay, so we'll say Y equals 2X minus 3. Then your next step is to change all the X's to the Y's and Y's to X's. So that will give me X equals 2Y minus 3. And then finally, solve this for Y by adding 3 and dividing by 2. And that's my inverse function then. And on part, uh, well, let's see. That's all there was really to that last problem. So let's go to 16. 16 says for this function, which is a quartic equation, what is the minimum with these different restricted domains? So go to your quartic sheet and put in your coefficients. And the first restricted domain is negative 5 to 5. Remember to click the find max mens button. And when you do that, you'll get the minimum is at this point right here, 5, negative 62.5. And you can always confirm that by setting your start and end of your graph to be the same as your end and, uh, lower and upper values of your domain. And you can see that the lowest spot is at 5. And remember to click that button. Now, we, once we click it for that equation, we don't need to click it again for the other parts of this problem. And now, second part, B, is on a restricted domain from negative 5 to 1. And the minimum is at negative 5, 87.5. And again, you could change these values to confirm that on your graph. And then we could check negative 4, 1 is what part C says to do. And that means the minimum would be at this point right here, negative 0.526 and a height of 97. And I'll go ahead and confirm this one, negative 4 to 1. If I look at that graph from negative 4 to 1, I can see that the minimum spot, or the lowest spot, is this point right here, which is that local minimum of negative, five, negative 0 0.526, and that's the height right there. Okay, 17 is a function we're supposed to get the inverse of. So first write it with y equals instead of f of x equals. Change all the x's to y's and the y's to x's to get x equals 5 times the cube root of y minus 1 plus 2. Now we need to solve this for y. Now first thing is subtract 2 and divide by 3. Sorry, subtract 2 and divide by 5. I had a typo there. Subtract 2 and divide by 5. And then next thing we need to do is to get rid of the cube root. Well, to get rid of the cube root, cube both sides, so we end up with this quantity cubed equals cube root cancels out cube. So we just have y minus 1 in the last step, just add 1. And so this would be my inverse function, and we could write it with the inverse function notation. 
On 18, it says, what is the maximum for this function? Now, this function is, uh, the only way to graph this is to graph it on the uh, any graph sheet. So let's go to that sheet. Okay, and we would type that in. It was the square root of x. Now, the square root of x is the same as x raised to the one-half power, just like the cube root of x is the same as x raised to the one-third power. If you ever have any trouble with that, look at the uh, chapter R sections. And then minus the absolute value of x, and the way you say absolute value on uh, Excel is abs, and then parentheses x, absolute value of x. So we want to graph this, so I type it in, and I hit enter, and then I go down here and click the get the graph, and you could look at this over long range and what you would see is that the main part of the graph that uh, has a peak on it is between 0 and 1. Now when you click that button to get the graph what it really does is it changes all your x's to a10 because really those are the numbers that we're substituting in for x like we're substituting a10 in here then a11 here and that's what it does. It, it uh, does it the, the Excel way when you click the uh, copy button, but you can just put in X, but I thought I'd show you what it does when you do that. And anyway, you can uh, also click on the graph and put your arrow near it, and you see that the maximum is somewhere around an X value of 0.23, and we could narrow in on it then, maybe go from 0.2 to 0.25 on the graph, and actually I didn't go out far enough, so let's go from, how about 0.24? We'll get real narrow here on this, 0.24 to, that 0.25 might be the answer, so let's go out to 0.26, and I think we can tell right here is the maximum, so the maximum occurs at an x value of 0.25, and the height will be 0.25. Okay, on problem number 19, it says graph and solve the following. Nancy has no more than $5,000 to invest in two different accounts. So we'll say X plus Y is less than or equal to 5,000. One gives 7% interest and the other one is an 8.5% interest rate. And the minimum she can invest in the 7% count is 1,000. So X has to be greater than or equal to 1,000. We're going to call X the amount that she invests in the 7% account. And uh, the minimum she can invest in the 8.5% account is 3,500. So in other words, Y has to be greater than or equal to 3,500. Again, the minimum she can, in other, if it says minimum, that means that she has to put in that much or more. So Y is greater than or equal to 3,500. And she wants her income from one, for one year from these two investments to be at least $400. So her interest rate times her different amounts, 0.07X plus 0.05. Uh, 0.085y has to be greater than or equal to 400. So these are my constraints right here. And so let's go ahead and take a look at this. And I'd use the uh, uh, systems of linear inequalities or the linear inequality sheet. My one equation was x plus y is less than or equal to 5,000. So that's my first equation right here or inequality. My second was 0.07x plus 0.085y has to be greater than or equal to 400. And my Y value, the amount that I put in my 8.5% account has to be at least 3,500, and the Y amount has to be, or the X amount has to be at least 1,000, so at least $1,000 in the 7% account. And I can look at these to get an idea of what to set my viewing window uh, for here. And once you set that, you might even need be able to narrow in on it more because we realize that it has to be less than the blue line greater than the red line, greater than the pink line, so it would be to the right of the pink line, and greater than the green line, so that's above this. Now, it gives you four points of intersection then, so the blue is in uh, is my first equation, and my pink, they're color-coded, is my fourth equation, so if I look at the intersection of uh, point one and of uh, equation one and equation four, that's at the point 1,000, 4,000. So that's this point right here, and you can even see that on the graph. Uh, and you can get the other points just looking up here and getting the points of intersection by color coding it here. Blue and green would be, for example, the first and the third, and the first and thirds at 1,500, 3,500. And red and green is my second and third, which is right here at this amount. And then finally, red and pink is the last one that defines the solution area. The solution area is this kind of weird shape right here that the that hand is going in. And so the red and pink would be the two and four, which is 1,000 in this. Now, uh, we got the points of intersection that says, how much should she invest in each account to maximize her uh, interest? Well, put the most she's allowed to into the highest percentage account. 